young age, I always felt I needed to make sense. I was raised growing up at a country club pool, just a town over where I made most of my friends. We were of all different ages, and as we grew up, we all did the same thing. We became a lifeguard. Now, everyone younger than us already was a lifeguard, or was going to become a lifeguard, and everyone older than us was going to become one in the coming years. So when it was time to get my first summer job, the only logical thing to do was become a lifeguard. But that wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do. Sitting in the sun all day, listening to children screaming was not my ideal day of summer fun. I would have been more content working at the beachside restaurant with my best friend. But because being a lifeguard was the path set before me, that's what I did. And while the job grew on me, I always wondered what would have happened had I taken the job I really wanted. As I said, from a young age, I was always feeling that I needed to make sense. No one would ever tell me this directly, but there were so many ideas floating around that made me feel this way. Take what I wanted to do when I grew up. People would list careers like being a teacher, a doctor, or staying home to be a mom. They would never list options like being an actor, a fashion designer, or anything I wanted to do. That may not have been most ideal. They just listed the paths that were most common and accepted. And those are all great jobs, but still, nothing I wanted to do. So from then on, I felt I needed to make sense. I never liked the idea, but I went along with it because that's supposedly the right way to go through life. But that's not true. For instance, I love watching TV. But when I watch TV, I don't just watch TV. I study it. I watch all the interviews, I Google all the actors, I even go on imdb.com. It's a great time. And through doing that, I learned some things. Jesse Williams, who's most notably known for being on the ABC hit drama, Great Anatomy, was a teacher before he picked up acting. He left his secure teaching position to venture into an industry where you do not have a secure job. But today, he's a successful actor who spent 12 years playing a beloved TV doctor and is currently on Broadway, living out his dream. He did what he wanted to do, regardless of what others thought, and it paid off. Another example is Sean Flynn. Sean played Chase Matthews on the Nickelodeon show Zoe 101 for three seasons. But after three years, he thought it was the smart choice to leave and get his college degree. Years later, he spoke about how he regretted that choice and wishes he stayed on the show a choice some people may have found uneducated. But he regretted it. See, Jesse did the thing that worked for him, and it paid off. But Sean did the thing that everyone else wanted him to do, and he wishes he could change the past. Myself, Jesse Williams, and Sean Flynn aren't the only ones who've suffered from the idea of making sense. It's an idea that's broadcasted all over the world to many different ages and in many different forms. It's even broadcasted to adults. 50% of adults say in a job they don't like because, and a big part of those people are because they think it's easier to stay put or maybe they just don't want to move at an older age. When I heard this, it frightened me. We ask high school students to choose what they want to do very soon after they graduate and then we make it very hard for them to change their minds. This leads to people becoming bored, depressed, and dreaming of what they actually want to do. It's hard to start over, but if it feels right to you, you should do it because it's doable. Even high school students suffer from the idea of making sense. Take after high school plans. The most common path is college, and that's what's most put on to high school students. But some people get more out of two years studying abroad than some people get out of a four-year degree. But that also doesn't mean that college or any smart choice is the wrong choice. It's whatever makes sense to you. If you want to go to college, great. If you want to go straight into the workforce, great. If you want to go abroad, great. All are strong options. It's whatever you want to do. Around 70% of high school seniors in New Jersey go to college directly after they graduate high school. That's around 30% of high school seniors doing something else. Now, they may be doing something valuable, or they may be lacking, or maybe they can't afford to go to college. But regardless, their choices aren't accepted by most people. 
because seven out of 10 people feel college is the right choice after you graduate. That's ridiculous. It may be the norm, but you should do what you want to do, what makes you happy. And for me, going to college makes me happy. This fall, I will be traveling to North Carolina to study cinema and television arts at Elon University. Now, cinema and television arts isn't the most recognized major, but it makes sense to me. I have loved the ins and outs of TV for years, for as long as I can remember. And now, I get to study it for real. I get to go to school, and I'm finally excited about what I'm learning. I'm happy because of my choice, and I'm not thinking about what others are doing. I'm happy regardless of what others are thinking. And sometimes doing what makes you happy means doing the impossible. Take running the mile. For years and years and years, it was thought to be impossible to run a four-minute mile, under a four-minute mile. But one man, and that one man being Roger Bannister, knew he could do it and everyone thought he was crazy. But he ran the mile, and his time was three minutes and 59.4 seconds, just under four minutes. And you'll never guess what happened next. In the following two years, 10 other people ran a mile under four minutes. And why, you may ask? Because one person did it. One person did what they wanted to do and not what others wanted them to do. One person defied the odds and did the impossible. And because that one person didn't stick to the status quo, those 10 other people in the following two years and eight, over 1,800 other people to this day were able to defy the impossible and run a mile under four minutes. And the current record is three minutes and 43 seconds, just under 16 seconds under Roger's time. What a lot of people don't realize is that you are unlimited. You have the capability and the power to do anything you put your mind to, but we don't. And why is that? Because we're constantly thinking of what others think of us. And it comes from the roles we're born into and stereotypes, but all we have to do is just push that out of our heads. Emmanuel Acho, a former NFL linebacker, writer, and inspirational speaker, once said, it is easier to live in the confinement society puts for us. It is easier to live in a box. It is easier to be afraid of other people's fears. Acho, who defines his life as illogical, left the game of football to pursue a career in media, a choice that many people didn't understand, but he did it because that was what was right to him. And then he wrote a book titled Illogical about his choices and how society affected them. He talks about how we can replace the limits set for us, and with that, we will have endless possibilities. He wants people to break the pattern set and make their own. And I want that for you, too. I want you to do something for yourself and nobody else but yourself. If you want to be an actor instead of a teacher, great. If you want to go to abroad instead of going to college, that works. If you want to have ham on Thanksgiving instead of turkey, that's your prerogative. But that's the point. It's your prerogative, it's your smart choice, it makes sense to you. Doing what you do, wanna do will not always be easy, but it will always be worth it because the most important person in your life is you. So that's you need to listen to. Thank you.